Hey Keith, so I got a good topic to discuss with you. So it seems like if you ask 10 engine builders, you'll get 10 answers on what is the right way to break in the engine. And I feel like there's a lot of misinformation out there that people don't understand what the break-in process is even for, why we do it, and then how it should be done. So why don't you give us your take on it? What do you think from a ring guy's perspective? Well, from, from a ring guy perspective, and obviously we're running in a lot of other parts of the engine. We're wearing valve train parts, camshaft parts, people worry about breaking the flat tap and lifters. Sure. But simply looking at it from the ring guy point of view, the ring is the last part. It's the last part of that honing process. As good as we can get that hone is, is perfection, all the tools, profilometers, Incometers, diamonds, CBNs, venture, all of this CNC stuff. We, you know, CNC, all the, all stuff, the right? stuff we've talked about. We we just can't get it to that last little bit. The the ring is the last wear part. It's going to make that surface what it wants to be. Same thing applies brake pad to a rotor, lifter to sure. a camshaft. They're going to be that last metal working part. So we have to be kind of careful during that period of time to make sure we're using the right type of oil. You know, okay. rings actually want a little bit of friction during this. We don't want a real slippery surface. We've got to, you know, imagine, you'll know, get you know, that 10,000 grit sandpaper and you're trying to color sand your car. It's not going to do much. I need something with a little bit of bite. So that explains why you always hear guys say, hey, should I use full synthetic oil? Or, you know, what, why should I pay all the extra money for that break-in oil that I see? Well, I don't really want that full synthetic oil that offers me the protection down the road when I'm trying to get those parts to mate in and, and go together, right? Like, so what will happen if I put, you know, just go down to my auto zone and I just get the best, you know, most expensive full synthetic engine protection out there? What what happens? What would I see? What we see quite often is, is a, a very delayed break-in process. They put such a slippery oil in it. Again, it will eventually come in, but maybe not in your lifetime. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right on. So uh, obviously having the right oil is important. Now we also talked a little bit before about the tune-up and fueling. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, when we miss those things, like we're creating a less than desirable condition. So the right oil in the right place at the right time with the right amount. So we've done all the work on getting the cylinder finish prep right. We've selected a good proper breaking oil that's got, you know, and I'm no oil expert, but the right zinc levels, the right phosphorus levels, the right TBN numbers, as Lake knows, who's behind the camera, by the way, uh, to get that low TBN number. So we've we've got that right blend. But if we, we if we disturb this package by overfueling it okay. and washing that fuel out or going to the extreme other level, we've got no fuel in it. So we've created a very hot, very dry condition where there's no lubrication. We are going to damage the parts, whether that be just the cylinder wall, the cylinder wall, the rings. So during that initial running process, we really want things to be right. Okay. So we got to have the ring there. It's kind of lapping in that final honing process, but in order to work, we got to have the right oil and we got to have the tune up just right. What about the way I drive the engine? I've always heard like, oh, you know, guys say, well, I looked in the user's manual and you're supposed to baby the engine. I'm going, I don't really think that's what the ring wants. I mean, you guys spend a lot of time on gas porting both. The rings and talking to the piston manufacturers. Well, if we're gas porting the ring, don't we want that cylinder pressure? Tell us what you think about that. I agree 100%. There, there's, as Ben said initially, you ask 10 different people, you're going to get 10 different answers on a breaking engine. In. And what we want is we want to get that engine a load on it as soon as possible. You know, I made the comment about synthetic oils earlier. Sure, yeah. And there are guys that do break engines in on full synthetic oils and they do it successfully. Most of those people have access to. You know, what, what's the count here? Maybe four dynos and a Spintron bin? Well, let's see. We have two roller dynos. We have a hub dyno. We have an engine dyno and a Spintron. So, so we're pretty lucky. You're, you're pretty you're pretty fortunate. Like most shops, right? Yeah, everybody's got those. I think <laughs> I've got one in my backyard. I just haven't figured out how to use it yet. Yeah. But we can get that engine on the dyno. We are in a very controlled situation. We're looking at air fuel ratios. We're looking at water temperature. We're looking at timing. We're looking at all these things. We have a, a, an ability to put a, an immediate controlled amount of load on this sure. engine, work it through up and down cycles. And the bottom line is the rings need to work to make them seat up. We've got to have heat, we've got to have load. So even though that ring is a little bit springy and we have to compress it to put it in the cylinder, there's not enough mechanical tension there to do this job. We're gonna need cylinder pressure pushing that ring against the cylinder wall. So that's great. We have tried and true procedures that we've developed over the years here with all of our high tech stuff, but what do you do if you happen to be an average guy or a local shop that doesn't have four dynos or you know all this high tech equipment? Like, is he just out of luck? 
No, not at all. The, the point there is, and there are the guys, and, and we've all been there, we've all done this, we, we've had to just stuff them in the car and go racing. There's no sure. time to do anything, and, and we all get that. And for the ones that do it well, hey, we've gotten lucky. We've, we've really gotten it okay. But back in my days, hey, I take the, you know, the car to the track on Friday night, test and tune. I'm not there to see what it runs. All I'm there is to get loaded runtime on my engine. Pass after pass after pass to just get that load on it. And the same thing goes for the street guys. Okay, You want to get it out and drive it. I have this conversation all the time. Well, I've got to run it in my garage for 30 minutes right. at a high right. idle to break the camshaft in. And I'm like, uh, where does it say in there that it has to be sitting in your garage? Yeah, or especially a roller cam that doesn't really need that. If it's a flat tap, it, okay, I get it. But it doesn't say you got to be not driving the car. Exactly. Yeah, so go out and find a hill. And, you know, put that thing in high gear and get down on that throttle a little bit and go up the hill as many times as you need to. But, you know, cruising around at 25 miles an hour in low throttle settings and idling in the garage, that's the opposite of what that ring's going to do. This is bad, Juju. This is you know, one of the things I tell them right off the bat. Everybody, do not take this thing out. Put it on the freeway. Set the cruise to 75 and go, guess what? We're driving to Oklahoma. Yeah, right. This is bad. We want to move that RPM around. We want to vary that load. Don't leave it any consistent one place. Uh, if you happen to live in Phoenix, I'll suggest, hey, go run that thing up and down Sunset Point four or five times. You're going to be changing the throttle constantly. You're going to be engine braking on the downside. Work it back up the upside. So bottom line, get it out, drive it, try to vary the load, try to do some different things with it. Do not let it sit there and idle. There, there's a certain camp of people that, you know, they'll, they'll tell me, oh, I've got to let it sit there and idle and warm it up for 15 minutes. Then I've got to let it cool down and Right. Heat soak for 45 minutes and start it back up and run it again. And I'm like, I, I don't know where you read that. We're not getting anywhere. We're not getting anywhere. And if yeah. anything, we're doing damage. Yeah. So uh, obviously there's a lot of other things that we could add or talk about there. But most of that hits the high points of like, look, you got to have break-in oil that's designed to let those parts eat. You got to have a tune-up that doesn't wash all that oil or dilute it off the cylinder wall. You got to have... Uh, good cylinder pressure and, and vary the RPMs around so that you get all the you know pieces that need to be rubbing together or rubbing together. And then the rest is look for those signs of being, okay, I'm good, it's broken in now. Tell us again, what are some of the signs you want to look for for a, a, a healthy engine that's good and ready to go and then one that's maybe not broken in yet and what are some things we might see when, when the rings aren't ready? Well, things we can look at there are, are the obvious signs. You know, is the tailpipe dry? Okay. Are the plugs clean? Is it, not, is it trying to knock the valve covers off the engine because it's got so much pressure in it? Yeah. Uh, these are the things. So we're looking at, you know, is it breathing? Okay. Is it smoking? So do we have smoke or are the, you know, puffing out the breathers? Uh, my spark plugs are a good indicator and there's oil on the plugs. Okay. I can take the header off and look in that port and go, man, it's all oily and wet still. Or it's know. nice and gray. It's that's that almost like a powdery soft gray. Then you know it's, she's ready to go. She's ready she, to get after it. She's ready to go. And if you do those things, now you can do your oil change, change your filter, put in your good, you know, long life protection oil, and you can take, you know, that braking oil out, and you're going to get really long service life out of both your cylinder bore and your rings, and of course the rest of your engine too. So, uh, if guys have questions about more of that stuff, how do they get a hold of you? You can email us at Total Seal or reach out on the website www.totalseal.com. Call us. We're easy to get a hold of. Bottom line is, you guys will spend the time to help the guy who's spending his money get it right and only have to spend the money once. Absolutely, we want that phone call. If you're not sure, you're not sure how it was honed, you're trying to hone it yourself, you're trying to do things again, you're just not 100% sure, reach out, call us, email us, we wanna help you because all of this leads to a successful build, a successful build is a happy build. Sure, that guy's happy, so then he recommends your stuff to the next guy and the next guy and the next guy. So hopefully you guys uh, found some of that stuff helpful and you can put it into work in your own projects, whether you have a dyno or don't have a dyno, it's not the end of the world. You can still get it done right. So let's, uh, let's see what you guys have to say and what kind of questions you have, and we'll be ready to answer them.